Good morning, students of class 12th B. And today, let's hope we're going to finish with the chapter Even Strides in O level. We're almost uh, towards the end of it. And uh, yesterday, what had we discussed was that one thing we have uh, come to know that uh, yes, uh, Evans is very clever and he's managed to escape even under this high security arrangements which the authorities had made. That means there are some loopholes which he was able to find and uh, some lapses on the part of the authorities, right? So we notice that when the exam is over and McCleary leaves, Stephen, when he goes back to the cell to you know, check once again, he finds that on Ivan's chair, right, wrapped uh, you know, with a blanket around on his shoulders and all. So he sees that uh, McCleary is lying wounded. So this whole commotion, all the confusion starts off and uh, yes, there is one very important thing that we come to know was that on the question paper, what was there? There was a superimposed paragraph, right? Written in German, in which, which the governor was trying to, to translate that uh, the timing of the exam, the ending of the exam is very important and instructions were given where uh, he could reach, right? So that means, that is a very, very important clue, which was there on the superimposed page, right? Then after that, yes, so we know how, uh, you know, like uh, McLeary showing them the question paper, says, I know where he's gone to, and he's telling them to go to Elm's uh, field way. They go to the examination board, thinking that uh, some, you know, like uh, there's someone there from the examination board who's trying to help them. Then, of course, an uh, ambulance uh, is uh, called and uh, is, uh, you know, like what uh, told uh, to pick up uh, McLeary from there. But McLeary says that he'll uh, go with the, you know, the police van only and uh, they, he's asked to be dropped over there. But uh, when uh, the governor calls up the hospital, he finds that there was no person of that description. So no person with the name McLeary. Then, yes, yeah, so, you know, like it is found that the real McLeary was in his flat only at the given address. He had never left his house because in the morning two men, they came, they tied and gagged him up, right? So now please remember two men, they went to McLeary's room in the morning. So one of them could be McLeary who was in vigilant. Where is the other person? Who is the second man, right? Then yes, yeah, so the governor, he tried to interpret that uh, what is there written on the, passage there, the German, uh, you know, like information in that. So he's able to interpret it. He's able to understand it. And where does he reach? He's, he finds out that yes, the correction slip also, which was announced after the start of the exam, it was by the golden lion, right? So he reaches there, but yes, of course, here in this place, there might be many golden lions. It might be like not one, but many. So which one to reach there? And so how did he make all those calculations? That also we're going to find out. How did he even try to escape? And we do find out, yes, the governor has uh, caught him. He's reached his hotel. And Evans is very surprised to see him. And even there, right, he's telling that how he had to, you know, cut his hair the night before and keep it covered with his, uh, you know, like a hat. And uh, he was worried that Jackson might ask him to remove it. And then, yes, what would happen? They might come to know that what has he done to his hair, right? Then, yes, how the McCleary, the invigilator, wore two of everything, two shirts, a, a false beard also he had, and uh, yes, you know, like a coat and everything. So double, double of everything. And why was it important here that before the exam got over, why should the officer move away from that place? Right, so who was there constantly invigilating? Who was there constantly moving around? It was Stephen. So they had to get him out of the way. So those three, four minutes before the examination got over, otherwise they would never have got time. So he says that in a hurry, you know, they had to make that change. He had to put on the beard and everything like that, isn't it? But even uh, although when the exam was going on, why do you think even asked for a blanket? Of course, it was a little chilly there in his cell, but the real purpose was that behind, under the blanket, what did he want to do? 
he wanted to you know wear that collar and uh, yeah, like you know, the things that he could do while uh, the exam was going on and uh, what was the constant pose that stephen saw whenever he looked to the people he saw even you know, just staring there with the pen in his mouth and mcleary would be reading the newspaper so it never even struck him also because everybody is quite sure that yes even does not know german and they don't know what he is going to write for the exam so now let us find here certain answers to certain questions that we have and yes here do you think the governor was actually a good for a giggle gullible governor was he so till now he's been very smart he's been able to yes his knowledge of german has really come in handy right but is that enough is that enough so is it when you know like there is an occasion like yeah the prisoners are going to take the exam or there is some other event or activity is that when the authorities have to be alert or is that alertness required always can they ever let down their guard can they do that no they cannot so in this case how did all this happen how was even you know so smart enough to take this daring step what gave him the courage to do that let's try to finish this uh, chapter today yes all if you look at the screen please so yeah what has happened even he enters his room and who does he see is sitting on the bed he sees the governor so he's shocked he is uh, you know stunned and able to say anything and wondering that how did this happen okay yes finally he spoke it was that bloody correction slip i suppose so there's that slip on the paper that gave me away well the governor failed to mask the deep satisfaction in his voice there are a few people who know a little german so he's very proud of himself i know a little german and help me catch you slowly very slowly evans relaxed he was beaten and he knew it he sat up at last and managed to smile ruefully you know it wasn't really a mistake you see we hadn't been able to fix up any hotel but we could have worked that some other way no the really important thing was phone for the phone to ring just before the exam finished to get everyone out of the way for a couple of minutes so we had to know exactly when the exam started didn't we he said no that the correction slip was not so important what was important was the timing of the exam so yes exam was supposed to start at 9:15 it started at 9:25 then yes so 9:40 they made the call and then they asked that to yes when did the exam start so the governor gave them that information that this is when the exam started and here they had to make a call right 5 minutes before the exam got over so they could get the officers out of the way so the so starting of the exam was very important so they would know when the exam would end obviously and that was when their plan would start coming into action yes yeah, so that escape would happen now who do you think escaped was it even or was it mcleary and like a fool i presented you with a little piece of information on a plate because the governor told him that this is when the exam started well somebody did so you see sir that correction slip killed two birds with a single stone didn't it the name of the hotel for me and the exact time the exam started for um, for so it's not giving right the governor nodded it's a pretty common word so yeah so he said that was there the correction slip was two things it told right they made the call the people here they came to know when the exam started then also they gave the information because till then it was not confirmed which place he should go to right that golden lion or whatever where he had to go to so right so they gave that so please change okay and now they knew when the exam began because 5 minutes before the exam got over they had to make another call it's a pretty common word good job it is pretty common sir or i'd never have known where to come to would i he's saying thank god it's a common name otherwise considering how bad my german is i would never have been able to find out 
Nice name though, Zam Golden and Lowen. How did you know which golden lion it was? There's hundreds of them. Same as you events, index number 313, center number 271. Remember, six figures. And if you take an ordnance survey map for Oxfordshire, you find that six figure reference 313271 lands you bang in the middle of Chipping Norton. So, yeah, so they've also, you know, when he showed the uh, exam paper to the governor and you say they've gone to Newbury, Newbury, I'm thinking, yes, I think so. But the governor was also quite smart enough. He said some numbers were there. Wasn't uh, McLeary repeating some numbers? This is the index number. This is your center number, all this. So put together, there were some kind of measurements, you know, some kind of directions, which place to go. And he says, when you look at the map, where does this code put you? In the center of that place, right? And you are there in the middle of Chipping Norton and that is where the golden lion is. Yeah, you're right. We hoped you run off to Newbury. So we're putting you off, go to Newbury, but they were somewhere else. We did. Well, that's something I suppose. That question paper even, could you really understand all that German? I could hardly. No, of course, I couldn't. I knew roughly what it was all about. We just hoped it throw a few spanners in the works, you know, sort of muddle everything a bit. So he said, you know, the German question paper and all the information that was given over there, the three minutes before this, that, he said, I couldn't understand it a bit, but it was not for me, actually. It was in case I'm caught, you know, like, so to put everybody off track, the governor stood up. Tell me one thing before we go. How on earth did you get all that blood to pour over your head? So it was even who was there in the cell, McCleary had left. Okay. So McCleary had been escorted outside. And actually, they couldn't take such a risk because his face would be very clearly visible. There was no way he could hide his face. Even suddenly looked a, a little happier. The governor's praising him. Clever, sir. Very clever that was. How to get a couple of pints of blood into a cell, huh? When there's none to start off with and when, uh, when the invigilator, shall we say, gets searched before he comes in. Yes, sir, you can well ask about that. And I don't know if I ought to tell you. After all, I might want to use that particular. He says, no, I, I don't think so. I should tell you. But uh, yeah, there was something. The invigilator was going to get checked. He could not, uh, even his pen knife was taken away. So there was one thing which was a little suspicious. What was that? The rubber ring. Now, what is the purpose of that? Anything to do with the rubber, little rubber ring for piles, perhaps? Evans grinned feebly. Clever though, wasn't it? Must have been a tricky job sticking a couple of pints now nah, you've got it wrong, sir. No problem about that. No? So he put, there was blood in that ring. How did you get that blood? Now nah, it's the clotting you see. This is very, very important. All of you, please look at this paragraph here. Very important information. They got the blood in the tube. Then what happened? Yes, they had that tube with them. But what would happen to the blood? It would clot. It would not come out. It would dry up. So there had to be something there to stop the blood from clotting, okay? Now it's the clotting, you see, that's the big trouble. We got the blood easy enough, pig's blood. It was from the slaughterhouse in Kidlington, but to stop it clotting, you've got to mix, mix your actual blood, even took a breath with one tenth of its own volume of 3.8% trisodium citrate. So trisodium citrate was the chemical which was used to prevent the blood from clotting. And what did they have to do? One tenth of its own volume. So that blood, you know, like how much? So one tenth of the volume of blood had to be mixed with what? Trisodium citrate, human blood. So that was a difficult part. Didn't know that, did you, sir? So see how much information. And uh, supposing, you know, like these criminals, they go to such an extent and you think, why are you here? 
isn't it? Look at them, they are doing all this research and finding out how to do this and how to do that. So why, why can't they do something productive with the very productive brains that they have, right? So yes, the important thing was how to prevent the blood from clotting. So yes, so they needed that blood. So uh, Evans could pour it over his face so no one would recognize him, okay? Or suspect that he was Evans. So they, it was very important. And how was it done? It was by mixing one-tenth of the blood in what, 3.8% trisodium citrate. The governor shook his head in a token of reluctant admiration. We learn something new every day, they tell me. Come on, Milaj. So every, I'm learning something new. Evans made no show of resistance and side by side, the two men walked slowly. Evans knows his game is over. I'm caught I'm going back. Tell me, Evans, how did you manage to plan all this business? You've had no visitors. I've seen to that. You've had no letters. I've got lots of friends, though. What's that supposed to mean? Me German teacher for a start. You mean? But he was from the technical college. Was he? Evans was almost enjoying it all now. Ever check up on him, sir? So right now, there was nobody coming to meet you. No letters. How did you plan this? He said, did you check my German teacher? He said he was from the technical college, but nobody verified him. God almighty, there's far more going on than I. So he's very surprised. Oh, so many things happening. Always will be, sir. Everything ready? Asked the governor as he stood by the reception desk. The van's out the front, sir, said the pretty blonde receptionist. Evans winked at her and she winked back at him. It almost made his day. A silent prison officer handcuffed the recaptured Evans. And together, the two men clambered awkwardly into the back seat of the prison van. So you soon, Evans, it was almost as if the governor was saying farewell to an over old friend after a cocktail party. Cheerio, sir. I, um, I was just wondering. I know your German's pretty good. But do you know any more of these modern languages? Not very well. Why? Evans settled himself comfortably on the back seat and grinned happily. Nothing really. I just happened to notice that you've got some O-level Italian classes coming up next September. That's all. So he thinks that this year I appeared for German. Next year I'll try for Italian. Perhaps you won't be with us next September, Evans. James Roderick Evans appeared to ponder the governor's words deeply. No, perhaps I won't, he said. As the prison van turned right from Chipping Norton onto the Oxford Road, the hitherto silent prison officer unlocked the handcuffs and leaned forward towards the driver. For Christ's sake, get a move on. It won't take them long to find out. Where do, we, where do you suggest we make for, asked the driver in a broad Scots accent. What about Newbury, suggested Evans. What do you think has happened in the end? Yes? What's happened in the end of the chapter or end of the story? Anyone? Yes, please, can you tell me? What has happened in the end? Yes, absolutely. Even has escaped. Yes, right. And once again here, what, why or how did this happen? What should have the governor done in the end? Should he have allowed Evans to go unescorted? Or he should have taken the, uh, you know, like Evans with him? Or once again, checked who were there in the van. Right, so he's done that mistake again. He did not check. So, like when we hear in the end that he's talking in this broad Scottish accent, who was that? He was the person who was the invigilator. And yes, there was a second call that was asking for a prison van, wasn't it? Right, so yeah, this is where they got the prison van from. And yes, the driver there. And uh, so, once again, even says he has a lot of friends, they've managed this also. Right, so Evans has escaped again. Right, yes. So, who do you think is uh, much more smarter? Is it the authorities or the criminal? 
So once again, yes, the criminals, they are always not one step, I'll say two steps. Once again, by the time the governor reaches back and he tries to figure out what has happened. So once again, these men will be far, far ahead of them. Okay. Yes. So wasn't this story interesting? 